In this tutorial, we are using the green tool to classify objects. The first step is to add the green tool and then add the images. Click on one and control A to select all of the images and click open. Then we define the region of interest. By default, the whole image is selected. We click apply. The next thing to do is to label the views. We have 3,600 views. We notice that the images have been named in a specific way. The file names have a similar structure for every image. Looking at the first view, we see that the file name starts with the number 1, underscore, L1, C1, next, 1, underscore, L1, C3. It is the same structure for all of the categories. Ten underscore L six C three. We see that the first number is the number of the category. This is category twelve, and there are several pages of images. So if we go to the last page, we see that there are 150 categories. The other letters and numbers indicate a change in the luminance and contrast conditions. We use this file name structure to label the views. To do this, we label views and select regular expression. A regular expression is the sequence of characters. It's a piece of code that describes a pattern of strings and will match this pattern of characters. In our case, we will use backslash D for digit. Other possibilities are backslash W for word and backslash S for white space. If you need assistance, you can review the documentation on the web, which is very helpful. And there is also tech support to help you solve any problems you are facing with regular expressions. We have slash, digit, then asterisk. This means there can be several digits, any number from 1 to 150, so up to three digits. This is in parentheses because this is the pattern that we are interested in. It is the number of the category. Then underscore followed by dot asterisk. For repeats, this will match the rest of the file name, which we are not interested in. We now have our 150 categories. We can verify that the parameters are adjusted correctly. The feature size is set to 60. We observe that this feature size indicated by the circle in the lower left-hand corner, is a little smaller than the object on the image. We notice that all of the images are approximately the same size. There is not a lot of difference in size from category to category. The feature size is a little smaller than the object and should be just right to differentiate the objects from one another. Now we can train in order to see the results.
Results of the training and processing are shown on the right sidebar. You see the confusion matrix and also a table that summarizes every statistic for the 150 categories. Importantly, we have the F-score, which is an average between recall and precision. Notice that the F-score is scored at 100% for most of the categories. On the bottom, we see that the average statistics for recall, precision, and F-score for all 150 classes. The F-score overall score is 98.7, telling us that there are a few images that are misclassified. Now on the confusion matrix, we observe that on the vertical axis is the labeling of the different categories. If we hover the mouse over a point, it shows the category label number as well as the marking. The marking corresponds to the horizontal axis. This confusion matrix is difficult to analyze because there are so many categories. This is an unusual example. The confusion matrix is easier to analyze when there are a maximum of 10 categories, for example. In our case, there are 150 categories, so it is hard to see with the naked eye. Luckily, a box with the information displays when you hover your mouse over a point on the matrix. We observe that there is a misclassification here. If we click on it, we see that it's label 16, the 16th category, but it is being recognized by the software as category 19. This is easy to see since all of the perfect matches are on the diagonal, meaning that the marking from the software is equal to the labeling from human inspectors. If we look at the misclassification, it corresponds to the 18th marking on the horizontal, but the 16th label on the vertical. Now that we know this misclassification, we can select all of category 19 on the table. We scroll down the table, and we can double click on category 19 and it shows all of the elements labeled as category 19. We understand why this was misclassified since it has exactly the same shape and likely the same grayscale as category 16. This is because we set the color channel equal to 1, meaning all of the images were converted to grayscale. It would be much more efficient to have three colors, RGB code for red, green, blue, and test. The software will recognize different images. We can also see that the images are RGB on the top left corner and three times eight bit images. With this correction, we should obtain better results than we have now, but as we take a glance through the results, we see that most of the images are correctly classified, meaning that even using only the shape of the objects, the tool could classify most of them correctly. After training and processing with the three color channels, we see that the results are better. Already we see on the confusion matrix that all images seem to be classified correctly.
and also on this table that the average F score has increased to 99.43%. However, not all images are correctly classified, and if we look at this point, label 5, and marking 50, we can compare the two classes. It seems there is a conflict between categories 5 and 50. If we look at category 5, we observe the misclassified images. And if we look at category 50, it is the same object, perhaps in different conditions. So it is understandable that the software gets confused with the two categories. There are also other cases of confusion. Label 66 and Category Marking 60. If we look at Category 60, the category is Bottles. And Category 66 is the same bottles, but the color is slightly different. The Category 66 bottles are green, where the Category 60 bottles are bluer in color. In some categories, the conflict is as simple as a slight difference in color.